headquarter campus, then we have Orange County and San Diego and San Francisco. And this is a two design, theater design. Uh, we're gonna see a you know, Hollywood costume design. Then you can go on to get a, a certificate program, which is an advanced study. Surprise to her, as actually it was to, to we here at FIDM who did not think Fantastic Beasts was going to win. I would have lost money had I, you know, bet. But I didn't think. The, the problem is, you know, we are standing in front of Wonder Woman right now. We're enjoying her. She's real sexy. But in 50 years, this costume will not exist. And what this kind of movie is now called. Action? No, and when it comes to costume design. Because we have so many different characters, it's really fantastic. Uh, and designers can really dive into the past uh, to create whatever they need for the present. I mean, there is now a very obvious costume. Uh, we want big blockbusters, small independents. We want historical, contemporary sci-fi, the broad range, particularly because we do um, teach this here. We have men. And then also on the other side of the uh, gallery, we have the Star Wars. And you know, sci-fi films are huge. They're, they're quintessential costumes. I mean, the thing is that I'm amazed at thinking about Star Wars now, and there is no more Darth Vader. How can you, you know, have Star Wars? It's actually a very tricky exhibition to put on every year. We've already started on next year's exhibition. Um, because when we go to the movies and we sit down in that theater, we think, oh, they filmed it last week. We're watching the trailers, we're talking to colleagues, say, oh, do you have any films coming out that you think would be interesting? Whatever. And because um, we got to gather them together from all over the world, literally. The beautiful couture world of the 1950s. It's, a, it's an amount, the, um, Daniel Day Lewis's character is an amalgamation of actual real designers that, that, that were in the 1950s in London. Um, everything in the film was bespoke. Everything was um, Her costumes for the film, unlike all of the other actors, were custom made for her by Chanel Haute Couture. It, it, it battled the sexes, early 1970s tennis, I'm sure maybe a few of you are old enough to remember. Maybe. <laughs> and we have Itania. So this is our little sport corner. Uh, early 1990s. So uh, what's really fun is I'm, gonna I'm not going to talk about Battle of Sexes, but Itania. It's really great. I love these costumes. And our museum staff was so excited that we were able to secure the film. They all wanted it. Um, so, you know, it's really interesting when you think about this clothing uh, manufactured in Italy. So we're talking Italian suits, but it's supposed to be Britain and then bespoke. Um, the thing that's really fascinating about, about Speech is how designers are now having to morph and be more involved in other aspects of designing thought in the movie making world and in costume. That the more fabric you have in your film, the more likely you are to be nominated for best costume design. Uh, this is Tulip Beaver about the Tulip Wars in 17th century uh, in the, the Netherlands. And we've got Murder on the Orient Express on this side, and we're going to talk about on the other side as well. But if anybody saw that, I actually I really enjoyed it a lot. I'd like to see it again. About Winston Churchill, the time of the war, and, and Dunkirk. We just looked at Dunkirk, the costume from Dunkirk, so it's kind of a perfect uh, segue in. Nominated, excuse me, for best costume designer, uh, um, Jacqueline Duran is the designer. Have you heard that name already? For what movie? But the costumes are brilliantly done. I mean, really fabulous. I'm a dress historian. I like to see authenticity. Out very uh, traditional Indian in dress. And as the movie progresses, he gets grander and grander. That is going to help us define her body. If she were all in this chocolatey dark brown, we and the camera is moving and she's moving, we're not going to be able to define her body as easily. So. Textures, all the uses of texture translate into black and white film. That's not a, 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 an everyday occurrence anymore today. Because often, but at the same time, um, Sandy Powell wasn't 100% certain that the director was going to go with black and white. So she had to also make sure to the Fitter Museum History Gallery, 
So we, uh, as I mentioned, we have a 15,000 piece historic dress collection that spans more than 400 years. Christina Johnson, who's the associate curator, she and I curate shows that, that take up all of the gallery space. We're working on a show made up of women's uh, high fashion because that's what's really available. Um, and we have some really fantastic outfits. We collect as far back as we go and as up to the minute as we can get. Uh, Christina, our associate curator, found the um, uh, Zondra Rhodes Ensemble. This is from 1981. Uh, it's called the Renaissance Collection. Very rare, it was very influential in its time. Uh, this outfit here, I'm just gonna run through these really fast in silver. She would have had a very wide skirt with the train as well. Fabrics were so in famous French couture houses in late, the late 19th century. This is, I'm, I'm astounded when something like this survives. It is in flawless condition. She's absolutely the ideal of the Gilded Age, the kind of the hourglass figure. Very, very well made. And no kidding, they're from Philadelphia. Hmm. I haven't found anything about the maker. They're just like beyond crazy. I call them the barbed wire boots. <laughs> I've never seen anything else like them. Whereas these are really, height of the late Art Nouveau. These were made in Miriam Bog. Uh, we, we can find the, the crest um, the, that's on them so we know the family. This is a French couture gown by the Couture House. Sorry, my back's to you. Uh, Jacques Doucet. Doucet was one of the preeminent, like the, the Dior of his, of his day. Um, we do not collect history. Standing next to me is another very dapper gentleman. Um, this is a court suit from the 1760s, same time period as the Grand David Bodice, also British. Most likely they were worn, they could have been worn in the same room together, whoever heard of the Titanic. This is the era, this is 1912, 1913. So this is what the ladies on board the Titanic, I actually don't know how the woman could have worn, walked in it even. There's an underdress that actually comes right to here. So this is her height, all right? But then this overdress actually comes all the way out to here. So she would have had to like constantly like to 